Coming up on FSM News, we're going to tell you about Chicago's historical restaurants, the pink tax, animal abuse, and in general, the effects that social issues have on the people of Chicago. Stay tuned. Your total will be twenty dollars. Oh wait, FSM News is on. Hello and welcome to FSM News. I'm Angie. And I'm Delilah. Have you ever known what it was like to feel neglected? No, but here's Julia with more on how every day an animal is being neglected. So in many cases when we see people abusing animals, it's because they either witnessed it when they were young or were a part of a violent household you know, during their development. Violence in and of itself um, is sometimes a coping mechanism for some folks. People who abuse animals will do it because they have issues themselves. They just don't feel good about themselves. My job here at the Anti-Cruelty Society is coordinating our education programs uh, where we talk to youth, we talk to the public, and we talk to them about the importance of being kind, about being compassionate, about reporting animal cruelty and neglect in their neighborhoods when they see it. And through those actions, I hope that we're able to decrease the number of animals that are being abused and neglected each year. I think the most important thing that people can do to end animal abuse is to just speak up when you see something. Wow, that was powerful stuff. I can't believe that animals are being neglected right here in Chicago. Speaking of things going on in Chicago, here is Anna with a profile on local Chicago restaurant Mi Tierra. Uh, well, I'm the manager here at uh, Mi Tierra Restaurant, and day-to-day uh, -day, um, kind of, you know, um, tasks and little jobs to encounter and tackle with uh, can kind of vary from day-to-day. -day. It depends uh, sometimes in the season, if it's like, you know, the spring season, the summer season, or the fall season, as we do see a lot of different waves with our clientele and they all vary in the form as to how they want to work with like you know parties and events uh, key example you know being december uh, it's more like you know a festive holiday thanksgiving a lot of companies uh, big corporations as to compared to like you know the spring season which is kind of like you know a more family smaller groups a lot of uh, communions baptisms weddings birthdays graduations so it varies the day-to-day -day job and it kind of depends on what's occurring every week but there's almost always something going on i started working here uh roughly around seven years ago on the first you know uh first week opening back up uh so uh first week was a uh, very popular um you know a uh, bit hectic you know just like anything that you're about to uh reinstate or kind of put back into pace uh, you will have your setbacks and your obstacles, but I do recall that first week being very stressful and you know very work, uh, very heavy workload. Um, well, the idea and the concept of it was to not change it. I mean, don't fix something that's not broken. And uh, previously, like you know, uh, we had a strong clientele with um, certain tastes and they, they knew what they wanted. They, they, they knew exactly what they wanted. And when we reopened the restaurant, uh, that was kind of like, you know, the mindset for it was to kind of stay within the same concept. Um, we actually brought back the majority of the chefs, you know, the same staff from the previous uh, restaurant as well. So they all came back with the same ideas, same recipes, 
but I would want to be honest and you know there are some modifications some changes and uh, sometimes changes to the platters are a little bit better maybe being a little bit like you know more eccentric with presentations and even change up a recipe here and there the specialty of the house I think would be the parrilladas uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it like a dish because it's more like a grill at your table that has an assorted variety of cuts of meats and uh, poultry as well. Uh, and I would say that's the party favorite for the restaurant. I feel like our domain and our strength uh, for the restaurant is large groups, as I mentioned. Uh, and the parrilladas tend to work really well, gives this kind of family style kind of uh, feeling to it as everyone's dining out. Uh, but I would definitely give the prize to the parrilladas. We have a parrillada de lujo, which is a grill at your own table. It's got an assorted cut some meat and topped with shrimp. That's probably our number one probably dish. Wow, it's crazy that the restaurant has stayed in the neighborhood for such a long time. Speaking of neighborhoods changing, here's Jamarian with a package on gentrification. personally noticed gentrification. Yeah, I would say like during high school, right? Just little by little seeing, you know, a condominium being built. I would say I was not familiar with gentrification until late high school, early college. So basically quality of life improves. Common misperception, yeah, that's basically a common misperception that quality of life improves. Not because like, you know, you know, higher income people are coming in, because the city intentionally devotes resources to the area in order to like, you know, attract, you know, real estate. There are certain companies and businesses that I personally used to go to that have definitely gotten an upgrade from it, but I also see those who have been forced out of their homes due to this. So personally, I do see pitfalls, but I also see some benefits. In order to address gentrification, we gotta, you know, get this mindset out that, you know, it's a natural process that's gonna happen no matter what. But if we educate people as to real estate in that game and how to buy property so that they cannot be forced out and what it means for HOA assessments to be locked, then I think that we can really help people in the community maintain their properties. You know, we gotta view housing as a guaranteed human right and not as a commodity to be sold on the market. Um, I do believe that the pitfalls outweigh the, the benefits when it comes to gentrification. And that's because I think anything that rips apart a community or forces someone who's lived in an area for decades in some cases to leave because of the population or the demographic changing is disrespectful and very, um, it's un-American. You know, for example, like, yeah, we, the gang problem isn't as bad as it was like 10 years ago but you're just pushing the gangs to other parts of the city. You're not getting rid of the gangs or the crime. You're just pushing it, sweeping it somewhere else. I would not like for someone to come in my neighborhood to change things up. Me neither. You know what I wish that people would change up? The pink tax. What's the pink tax? Stick around for our upcoming Did You Know to learn more. The pink tax is a gender-based price discrimination where they have women pay more for things as ridiculous as clothes, vehicle repairment, toys, and self-care products such as deodorant or tampons. Women already get paid less than men, and, but they end up spending about $1,350 more than men a year. That's $1,350 more she can't use to get out of college debt but to put into her retirement fund all thanks to the pink tax. This is a terrible thing for obvious reasons, yet yeah, it's tried to be counterbalanced, such as California passing a gender discrimination law in 1996, but even that wasn't too effective. So it seems as if the only option is for women to band together, picket businesses, and buy men's versions of products until businesses are forced to change their ways.
So hi, I'm Jonathan, and um, today I'll be interviewing James. Matthias. Everybody Frank King! So, um, we're gonna have Andy. Yeah, I'm sorry. What school do you go to? Westinghouse. That's nice. That's nice. George Westinghouse College Prep. Westinghouse. Yeah, Westinghouse. Why do that sound like a second school? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to be, you bro? Uh, a psychologist. Okay. Um. You gotta be a. You, um. 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 What college do you go to? I did. I did not go to college. I'm back. So what's next? Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm just going to leave. All right. Yeah. Okay. You just put it on your own. Yo, um, how, how your day going so far, Gene? No, thank you. Oh, um, I'm like, on a bike. Yo, how your day going, Gina? That's uh, disgusting. So, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Photographer. 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 So are you gonna um, be that weird photographer that like sleep with like in mud and got like ten cats, or are you gonna be that no photographer that like takes pictures? Takes pictures. Um. So um. Are you aware you're missing your mouth? Or is that? <laughs> what, you, what are you talking about? But um. Um. So um. Why did you come on the show today? Uh, I was. <laughs> yes, I was exactly. just out in the hall, and you asked me to. You asked me to come on the show. No, we didn't. You just walked in here. I was like, what's up? That's why the security guard tried to stop you. You introduced me and you said, audience, we have Frank King. I don't know who you are, sir. This is right. This is right. Guess what you win. Can we close this door? You gonna put it on? Of course. Good. Because. That look pretty enough for you, Jimmy? I don't want to put this on anymore. Do I look pretty enough for you? Wait, uh, you're you beautiful. Do I, do I look pretty enough for you now, Jimmy? Can we go on prom? Do you look pretty enough for you? Yeah, yeah. I love how you like your woman. You like them bigger and strong. Uh huh. You having fun, Jimmy? Give him a hug, Jimmy. <laughs> Give him a hug. I thought you said don't leave the seat. You having, you having fun, Jimmy? Yeah, I heard don't leave the seat, so I can't give him a hug. Jimmy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the star. Okay. You having fun? Yeah. Good. That's our show for today. Until next time, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Just search FSM News. You can also watch us on Can TV channels 19 and 27. And don't forget to find us on ABC7 Chicago's website in the community section. And that's all for today. Media transforms media and society by providing opportunities for emerging creators, primarily from communities of color, to produce and distribute original content and pursue artistic, personal, and professional aspirations.